To a lot of people, finding what you really want in life is as easy as going through it, which is in and of itself one of the hardest things a person will go through. You'll experience as much joy as you would sorrow, and the end result as well as the next path you're given is never really told to you. It's always presented as a turning point in your life that you yourself will have to decide. And that turning point can only be resolved after a lot of self-reflection. But as hard as life is, the pain and struggle you go through is what will inevitably shape who you truly are and will manifest the fate that you forged for yourself. This idea of finding oneself and what purpose you will fulfill is something close to mine and many. Since it's a perilous and inevitable journey that all of us dread but will have to face at some point in our lives. That's the short and sweet of why I think Scaramouche in 3.3 is is the most relatable and admirable harbinger of the Fatui. I think no other person embodies betrayal more than Scaramouche has and still does. The absolute hell that this man experienced in his life is on a level that I dare say even the Archons can't reach. But betrayal and pain aren't just what makes this mechanical puppet so admirable though. It's how he decides to move on despite the amount of betrayal and the levels of pain in his already empty and heartless chest. A puppet that despite not having a heart is fated to feel as much emotional pain as possible. And despite his actions to erase his memory, his fate was still to relive that pain and revert to his old hateful self. Even his rise to godhood numbs every pain and feeling in his body except for the mental and emotional emotional pain in his head. The conflict and dichotomy that Scaramouche portrays in the game, known as the emotionless puppet that only cares for himself and his own motivations, but is subject to the most emotionally taxing experiences, that is to lose something or someone near and dear to him, is something that no one can ever fathom. Not only because he is a puppet that no one can ever be, but because as a puppet, this drastic and possibly inhumane experience is the closest Scaramouche can ever get to feeling like an actual human being. So welcome to another video of a theorist losing their sanity. Hey, stop! Why? Why? I just don't get it. I always catch you fucking watching this sick shit. In this video, we'll go over Scaramouche's proper storytelling, which includes the most recent 3.3 revelations and alterations that he created, the levels of betrayal as well as the final betrayal that shaped the Scaramouche we see today, his sense of emptiness throughout his journey, and finally the perseverance and strength that this man has to move forward despite everything he went through. Keep in mind that this video isn't about pretending to relate and understand a character such as Scaramouche, but to make it clear that the character in question cannot be understood at all, hence the title of the video. Now let's dive into the emotionless yet ever so emotional puppet of Tevet. Throughout the entire Genshin story about Scaramouche, my initial thoughts on this guy was that he hated everything, and I mean everything. I even thought of similarities between him and Signora, which I made a video dubbing her the embodiment of hatred and rage. But after finding out about Scaramouche's proper lore, not only from the opulent husk, but from himself as a character and the revelations introduced in 3.3, as well as his decisions after said revelations, I realized that Scaramouche is just lost, an entity searching for something to be proud of, something that every human being searches for throughout their life. This something is akin to what we humans often call a purpose in life. Granted, wanting to become a god was one of his purposes. He also had multiple other purposes that he thought he failed to follow through with. The purpose of being a puppet for an archon, to be a normal human being and be friends with the people of Tatarasuna, a promise to live with a boy afflicted with a sickness due to the effects of Tatarigami, to become a weapon for the Fatui to use with an iron fist, and finally his ultimatum to erase his own existence only to be thwarted by so-called fate and reliving his life a second time through his memories. Something I noticed that makes Scaramouche different from the other Harbingers however is that Scaramouche as a villain does not have a clear goal that he wants to achieve. Even though I did love his villain arc in Sumeru, I honestly can't find where his intentions lie. Every other Harbinger has their own end goal, possibly, that they set out to achieve. The Tori committing a trust for his own goal of experimentation and knowledge. Piero going against Tevat for his end goal to return to the old world. Even her sibling wanted to make Celestia pay, causing havoc in Tevat for that end goal. In contrast, Scaramouche caused destruction but to what purpose does he do it? To uncover the stars? I don't think so. To become a god? Not really either. These were something he did while being part of the Fatui. If he succeeded and became a god, then to what end goal would Scaramouche 
Karamu should be doing it for. If he did have a solid statement as to what he wanted in life, it wouldn't be to have a gnosis or to become a god. You might say he joined the Fatui because he wanted to have a gnosis, but that motivation goes way back to wanting to be a puppet for A. And to fulfill what the Electro Archon needs, he has to take away his emotions, which was already done by the Raiden Shogun puppet, which leaves Karamush with one recurring singular thought in his head, and that is to never be born at all. Taking away all the anger and hatred for the world, deep inside he just wants to be gone from the world. The same way many other characters from different series and games show off an outer intention, they all hide their real thoughts deep inside. Bear in mind, he joined the Fatui because he felt intrigued and, dare I say, simply curious of Piero's idea of frenzied banquets. If Piero hadn't gotten wind of Scaramouche and his utility in the Abyss, Scaramouche would still be wandering aimlessly around Teyvat and still not have a true end goal. We see an example of this happening when we met the Wanderer in Sumeru, working for a merchant that simply helped him because it was raining. If we hadn't been there at the time, the Wanderer would still be helping the merchant until he was fed up with how incompetent the Wanderer is, leaving him to wander yet again. As a little rendition, Scaramouche's real journey is not as grandiose as becoming a god, nor is it something simple as hatred. In fact, it never was. Even if he didn't erase himself from the world and still be known by the Fatui, he would still lose his rank and be left to wander yet again because of his failure. His real quest is to discover himself, a quest to find out his own identity in the world he was placed in, finding what he really wants, who he wants to be, and where exactly he should belong to, which was his true goal from the start. Even if Dottori didn't know that he was a puppet, the events would still be bandaged together where Niwa and another blacksmith jumped into the furnace instead. And Scaramouche, still naive at the time, would think of the same betrayal, leaving Tatarasuna to find another purpose. And if we didn't intervene with Scaramouche in 3.3, Scaramouche would still find out about his final betrayal one way or another. These countless betrayals is part of something he is bound to for his entire life. And that is called fate because he's fated to experience the endless journey to find what will never be found that is himself his lines regarding the raiden shogun makes it clear that his fate is bound and cannot be changed no matter what but fate is something deeper that we'll discuss near the end of the video for now let's go back to scaramouche first there's a heartfelt and deep meaning in scaramouche's final cinematic where he connects with his past self or at least I think there is. The choices he made with himself and who he wants to be was to rekindle with his previous incarnation, letting his memories eat away at him again and be consumed by his hatred and anger for everything. Walking through that hatred for the world, for himself, and finding the courage to move forward to a new path again, as he did countless times over. But on this newfound journey, he finally accepts himself as well as his own flaws. He connects with the emotions that he ever so denies having, finally finding a way to move forward with his own sins and carrying those sins with him as a reminder of his past self. This I think was some of the best visualizations of someone finally connecting with their inner self and accepting themselves for who they truly are. The new Scaramouche grabbing the hand of the old incarnation shows the hopes that he would move forward with the sins and flaws he wants to carry. But at the same time, the old Scaramouche grabbing his now new incarnation is symbolic to his old incarnation incarnation accepting that new life that he has now taken. Honestly, if I wasn't hyping myself up because I was streaming at this moment, I would have assumed the fetal position and bawled my eyes out. Scaramouche's choice to let go of his past, but at the same time, remembering his past is a symbol of a person's maturity to move forward no matter what hardships may come, and a symbol of responsibility to take the problems and flaws they have and cherish those flaws as a lesson for the future. Scaramouche assumes responsibility for his actions and taking to heart his flaws of having emotions, forges a new path for himself in his new incarnation, finally accepting himself for who he truly is, and moving Moving on with what he is meant to do in the world he is put in. Scaramouche's personality and choices from his new incarnation also comes into play with one of the more convoluted and mysterious aspects of Genshin Impact. 
visions. The mysterious eye of the gods that everyone wants to have for some reason and love to connect with the wielder's personality. As we know, there are seven elements. Animo, Geo, Electro, Dendro, Hydro, Pyro, and Cryo. Interestingly enough, apart from the base elements, each element connects with a certain desire or personality type that every wielder has. Granted, it depends on the individual themselves because like every personality and psychological state, it varies in stronger and weaker cases. What most people assume personalities of an emo are attached to are, but not exclusive to, duty, dedication, freedom, and even change or conflict. The element itself, animo, requires another element that it needs to swirl. This could mirror the character needing something to muse over or be conflicted with before an effect in their psyche takes place. Just like Jean and her work ethic or ideal of the line of Mondstadt, Sucrose and her experiments, Zhao with his duty as a Yaksha, Azo with his friends and family, and now Scaramouche and his past. Obviously, this is still debatable which personality trait each element sticks to, and personalities might not even be the basis for having visions. Scaramouche also mentions that the gods aren't guided by rationality or moral compass. So maybe gaining visions aren't about tragic experiences or great achievements, rather a helpless desire for something that can only be found deep within their hearts. One that we ourselves think can never be found, but still recklessly try to find anyway. We know that Scaramouche is moving forward, and we know that Scaramouche is carrying his flaws with him while moving forward with his new journey. All that anger and hatred is all but small grudges for the now reincarnation of Scaramouche. Yet the mindset and attitude that the old Scaramouche has still carries over. Despite having memories of the old and new incarnation, Scaramouche now walks free from his attachments to the Fatui, but at the same time is aware of the heinous acts that the Tori did to him. For a person to experience experience all that in one lifetime and having to experience it again in mere seconds, and to be able to move forward and gain a vision for his courage to move forward is something that many of us mortal humans can possibly do. One tragic experience is enough to mess up and muddle a person's psyche and scar them for life, but having multiple scarring memories and reliving that twice over is just something a human cannot handle. Which is why it's the perfect character arc for a puppet like Scaramouche to experience. Granted, it's wrong for even a puppet to go through, it shows how far someone like Scaramouche has gone and still trudges forward despite that. To simply start a new journey again after having felt all those pains in one sitting is what makes Scaramouche so admirable. And dare I say, even badass. I mean, what person can go through so much trauma in their life and simply walk past it twice and start a new life again? and again. Not all of us have experienced even at least one instance of Scaramouche's loss and renewed journey, let alone multiple instances with varying levels of mental agony. This is also why I think Scaramouche is such a relatable character, simply because he cannot be related at a human level at all. And I'm sure many of you have thought the same thing at some point in time, where only you can understand what's happening in your life and everyone around you can't seem to follow, no matter how much you try to explain it. So what you end up doing is not explaining it because inevitably they will never understand. And this exactly is something Scaramouche is going through in his newfound journey time and time again. Another journey where he has to walk an unbeaten path. A path that no one has gone through and for him to wander aimlessly. Every person has their own goal, and every one of you guys down in the comments memeing or mentioning your perspective is no exemption. Every one of us is subject to emotions that we all need to make peace with at some point. But it's not like all of us understand the mental torment that Scaramouche goes through. With the smug look and sharp tongue he uses against everyone else, despite kind of relating with him on that point in his life to some degree. But we all can understand his yearning to find himself endlessly again and again to a far smaller level. Scaramouche's journey is similar to each of our own experiences and life stories but is exaggerated to absurd levels. To have been betrayed, a wish unfulfilled, and most importantly, to endlessly search for our purpose in life. These are all of our combined experiences put into a single character. Which is why I think Scaramouche is one of the most relatable characters from Genshin but is also one that no one will ever understand. And for that reason, I feel bad seeing his journey compared to our own. Unlike our 
Power is where we eventually find our purpose and find that feeling of accomplishment. Scaramouche won't find that, and I think he won't ever find that since he is of course a puppet, a character that has no catalyst for emotions yet feels the most powerful emotions all the same. Someone that changed his purpose in life but is still bound to a purpose weaved by fate, that is to endlessly wander and find it, seemingly searching for something that he deems interesting and possibly, hopefully, be fulfilled at the end of a journey but never will be. And that's the tragic fate that Scaramouche is bound for as a puppet that has no purpose. No one will understand him, even himself, no matter how much he tries to find himself. This video takes a huge toll on my mental health for me to make a positive outro and maybe your own mental health as well, so feel free to like and subscribe as well as hit the bell and comment down below how you feel about Scaramouche or about this video. But here's some ending statement and advice that Scaramouche would at least be able to keep doing, and that's to stay mad theorists.